Hello there, Games Committee for uh, SGDQ 2020. My name is Zojalix, and I'm going to be recording a submission video for Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, the Bright Lord Any% Percent Speedrun. Uh, this is the video I'm using for this is going to be taken off of my current PB video that I'm using and commentating over. So, uh, timing starts in the run when we uh, confirm restarting for the campaign. So that will be again in three, two, one, go. So, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor functions kind of similar to the. Um, Batman Arkham games, if you're familiar with those, uh, there's a lot of the same similar mechanics and everything that's used. Only the difference is, rather than being Batman and using gadgets, we are going to be playing as uh, Celebrimbor and using magic, using elven magic. Uh, so this is kind of, this DLC campaign is kind of a prequel to the main game uh, that features a ranger known as Talion, but we're not going to be focusing on that too much because that's not really relevant for this run. Uh, so the basis of this is we have stolen the One Ring from Sauron, and we're going to be using it to raise our own orc army to fight against Sauron. And so our first mission here is uh, we just got to kill these orcs, and once we kill these orcs, we will be able to move on to the next area. Now, one important thing to know is uh, when we defeat these orcs, we can either brand them to join on our side, or we can just kill them. And so we brand, we use an ability known as Flash Brand, and that uh, helps us to brand multiple enemies, thus ending the fight really quickly. Um, and so also what we are going to be using is, in, a, in order to traverse the map super quickly, we're going to be using an ability known as Shadowbrand. And what Shadowbrand does is it immediately teleports us to um, another enemy, and we immediately brand that enemy as well. You see, we'll be using it quite a bit throughout the run, because a lot of the missions revolve around branding a certain amount of Uryx, Budokai with a specific amount of, with a specific style of like mission agenda involved. And then once uh, we do that, then we'll be killing and branding a captain to finish the fight to complete these forge towers. Once we complete all of the forge towers in a specific area, we are able to um, fight a war chief, and then we can brand the war chief to join our side. Once we brand the war chief to join our side, then we um, uh, can. Then we repeat the process again until we eventually get all the war chiefs, and then we conclude the DLC campaign by fighting Sauron. Uh, so a lot of this routing has been done by myself and another runner known as Texas Warrior 09. So uh, shoutouts to him as far as like what Uruks we do in what order and what kind of pathing we do for each of the missions. So here our first. Um, our first captain spawns, and every single captain is the same. Uh, they are, they do not change. And in order to do this fight quickly, is in order to skip this sort of intro monologue that the captain does, we activate the one ring, which slows down time and lets us do our combat um, executions in a multiple amount of order while the one ring meter is there. And then once the Captain gets to a super low health. We use our Wraith fla our Flash Brand ability, which will brand him immediately, ending the fight super fast. And so, that's the first fight section. You can see we've constructed a tower, and then we're going to be completing the route that we need to in order to complete the fastest route there that we have available to... Uh, Make things go super fast. And so this route, this PB video specifically is a new route, so you'll be seeing me go and access uh, the map a couple of times uh, just to help myself know where I'm going. Um, and you'll see that we're, now we're kind of in a period where we traverse from one mission to another, and so this would uh, be, and so we use that to obviously we use our flash, our shadow brand to 
get over two enemies super quickly and then brand them just because that's the fastest animation that we have and then we go to the next mission so petty mines is this first mission here and this mission is we're not allowed to be detected so in this our stealth is a lot more important we have to make sure that we are being extremely careful with all of our movement that we take and so uh, also one thing to note is you'll see at the end of every single brand you see me roll out of it that is an animation cancel uh, we actually uh, end the animations a, like a couple, like a little bit prematurely, just to continue to move fast, and that saves about a second or two every single time we do it. Uh, there are a couple of times where I don't do it, just because I can risk myself being detected, or um, it just I can make myself roll in a really weird spot that I don't like to. So here we have this little tutorial for Flash Brand that we tried to get earlier when we were in other animations, but we didn't get it, so we just lose a couple of seconds there because of that. It's not anything that major. And so now we're just going to be wrapping up uh, branding these enemies here before we get to our next captain fight. So now that we have everybody branded, we are going to be getting up to our current vantage point. And, uh, which triggers the captain to spawn. Uh, this captain is Snagog, the diseased. He's pretty gross. Uh, and his fight is pretty easy. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be shadow branding down to his uh, gang that he has. While this gang, while the shadow brand is happening, we're gonna be spamming two to activate the one ring, and then we're just going to start using our combat executions, and then uh, flash brand again in order to just make this fight go super quickly. And we don't have to worry about any other enemies in this fight because we're going, because it slows down time but we don't slow down. So we just go and we can just do so much damage to them really fast. And also we don't risk the captains because if the captains get a chance where they can attack, they can just cause a whole lot of mayhem for the run. And that's why this estimate is gonna be set in an hour and 10 minutes because there is a chance for a lot of things to go wrong. And if something goes wrong, it's a lot of adaptation that is necessary for the run. And so I'm setting a pretty generous estimate just to allow for the maximum potential for things to go wrong. And so now we're moving over to Lawless Disorder, which is our first war chief that we are going to be branding. Um, and the difference between the war chiefs and the captains is the war chiefs are significantly stronger in that uh, they take a lot more to go down, but we also can't flash brand them. Um, there's, like, the flash branding we use quite a bit throughout the run, but we aren't able to use it on War Chiefs. We actually have to go through what is called a uh, last chance struggle. And I'll explain that more when we get closer to it, because right now we have to make 50 Uruks kill each other, and this is a major chunk of RNG, because... We have to make sure that the orcs actually kill each other, which means we can't kill them. And so we're going to be going through and trying to aggro a lot of orcs and trying to draw them into one central area. And just try and build up our combos to be able to get us to a flash brand. And once we get up to that flash brand, then we can... Uh, Flash brand Urukai and then just have them fight each other. And one thing that we really need to be hopeful for is that a captain doesn't spawn. Because there are some times where captains will show up, and if there's a captain, they can really slow down the pace of the fight. 
like this guy. Because as you can see, we have to sit through this entire long animation of a captain being there. And because captains are just super annoying, they just become a mess. And this is also too where we get our first last chance struggle. Uh, you can see that we did that as because we lost all of our health, and but we recovered by using our last chance to um, kill that enemy, regain about half of our health, and then we're able to keep going. So this game doesn't have a difficulty setting, so we actually um, we actually uh, play it on the hardest difficulty every single time, and be and. We're significant, like, we're strong, but we're not as strong as we could be if we were doing, like, a main game run. And so, since now, it's pretty much just hoping and praying that we don't die and that Uruks kill each other. Um, this would be a really good time to read donations. Oh, uh, actually, one quick thing to note is we are only allowed to go down and have two last chance struggles if we so if we go down one more time we are for sure dead and so you'll see when i fight i focus a lot on the uh hunters which are the guys with spears because they will attack me from range and they're just the worst because they can hit you and they do quite a bit of damage and there's not really that much you can do about it. So here we go down again, but we have our little buddy there that distracts the other Urukai, allowing for us to survive. And that is extremely rare to happen, but since it did happen, it saved this run. <laughs> so now our first Warchief spawns, and every single Warchief has themselves their own little monologue. Now our strong shall repay you with death of your own. And then we just have to go and wail into him in the same way that we have attacked the other captains and once we do that we'll give his little last chance struggle and that will be the end of this mission So one thing you'll notice is while I'm in these execution animations, you'll actually see me adjusting the camera with my mouse. And what that does is that actually helps to keep my execution aimed at the war chief to keep him from uh, to keep him to keep my executions targeted on him because if they switch to another enemy, then we could get ourselves into a whole mess of issues. So that was the end of Lawless Disorder, and now we just have a little bit of movement here to make our way to Tools for the Task. Um, our primary movement when we don't have enemies that we can um, Shadowbrand to is actually using Elven Swiftness, or we pick up a Karagor here, because Karagors move the fastest. By using a Karagor, we're able to get to this mission super quickly. Otherwise, we would have to constantly make ourselves vault over things to activate Elven Swiftness and chain that together. And so that reduces the difficulty and as well as increases the speed. And so here we have two, we have two war machines here. 
that the Urukai are trying to destroy, and we don't want them to destroy it. And we're going to prevent that by um, branding them, but we kind of have, uh, and we're branding seven Uruks here. Am I using our flash brands? Building up our combos and then using shadow or I don't use shadow brands here in this specific video. But so now that we branded these guys, we have to go and brand the ones over uh, at the other catapult or at the battering ram. But I wait for them to get up and over to there, just so that way they're all kind of clumped together. So that way by the time I shadow brand over there, I don't have to try and ring them all up. And instead I can start build I can continue to build my one ring meter. Cause now we already have five branded and we only have like one or and we only have two more that we need to brand. And so now that they're two brand and now that the two of them are branded, we have a two minute auto scroller of making sure that both of the war machines are alive. So this would be another spot where it'd be really, this would be a good spot to turn it over to donations. So one thing that is important is we want to make sure that we are on this side with the batter gram. And the reason for that is that's where the captain is going to spawn. And so we want him to be here in order for uh, just for us to be as close as possible. So that way when he spawns, we can just immediately just destroy him. And we're actually standing in this specific spot just as kind of a way to manipulate his spawn. Because uh, he could potentially spawn on the other side if we were standing over on that side of the battering ram. But because we're sp standing here, uh, Buball the Gentle will now spawn there. And we can just rush over to him and kill him super fast. So we just do our rinse and repeat tactic of flash brands mixed with uh, flash brands mixed with or er, combat executions mixed with flash brands to finish them off. My power and grace will wash over this land. So now we're just going to be moving on to our uh, next mission, which is quite a ways away. And you'll see me kind of looking around, just seeing what I can find uh, that will help to make this process go faster. Uh, but for the most part, it's just running. So we can go ahead and throw it over to more donations. Get that fire lit! 
this land, I will bind So now we're at press the advantage. And it, press the advantage is we're going to build an army of 15 branded Uruks. And then we're going to fight for a while. Trying to maintain our army as best as possible. Uh, this should theoretically be an auto scroller, but it is actually super tough once you build the army because it can't drop below a certain number, otherwise the timer will stop. And if the timer stops, then we have issues because uh, the timer stops, we get our army back up to where they should be, but then it's now up to, but then the timer will actually restart back down to two minutes. And so we're going to be killing and branding, just continuing to kill and brand and kill and brand just to make sure that our army stays above 10. So this is a moment where it looks really self-explanatory, but again, the RNG from the Urukai can just make this really tough. And you see that I get kind of a moment of Maka S there when I get down to 12. Um, but again, it, theoretically, it should be an auto-scroller. This will probably be a moment where I focus a lot, so we'll probably turn, so we'll turn it over to more donations in at this time. So now we're going to set up for our next captain position. He's going to be spawning over there because we're standing right here. And so then we're going to once again do our strategy of using our ring of power to destroy Mozfell quick blades and then wrap up this fight super quickly. Which actually here, I ended up activating the ring not early enough because I didn't think that the... His little mini monologue was going to start that early. Uh, so it kind of threw me off, but then once I activated the ring, I just we just destroy him. And for some reason, the cutscene that starts doesn't start until after the ring meter is fully depleted. So we just kill one more guy just for fun. In my name, all here, Kellabrimbo, and know their true master. for all mortal to see. Your skin will fly in the wind as a flag to your failure. There will be no limit to my power. Oh. Alright, so now we're going to do our next uh, War Chief mission, which is Servants in Chains. This one comes down to a lot of actually... This is probably my favorite mission, just because we show off a lot of really cool stuff. So, we have to free um, our little homeboys here. Because our homeboys were captured. And we're going to save our homeboys by rushing into this uh, place. We're going to 
use our flash brands to brand a couple of rooks to keep the others distracted, allowing us to free our homeboy. And then they'll fight, and it will have a grand old time. Uh, and so here, another thing too, is we're going to be shooting these more guy fly nests that actually will spook every single Uruk that is around our homeboys, giving us the most direct access to him, and preventing us from having to take a super unnecessary fight. So we do the same thing here. Because normally if I were to rush in there, there'd be a massive ambush that would happen. And it would be an absolutely miserable experience to try and free our homeboy there. So just by using the Morgai flies, we prevent a lot. And so there we're using a combination of both Morgai flies and the explosive barrel casks. Uh to kill a bunch of guys as well as free our other homeboy and we've only got one more uh this guy unfortunately we don't have a uh really creative way to free him considering that the more guy flies over there way off in the distance so we have to do it by branding but it actually comes in super handy because of all this branding that we have to do we're also recharging our one ring because we don't recharge the one ring uh, beforehand because we're doing all of our creative shenanigans and so now we fight our next war chief who is Rug the Crafty and he has the most annoying monologue in my opinion I don't like him idiot elf your kind is soft I knew you would come to rescue this filth. There is no room for weakness in Mordor. We will eradicate you. He's also the most dramatic. But we don't like Rug because he captured our homeboys. And we're actually going to stealth brand a couple of guys on our way over to Rug. So that way we can completely charge the one ring. But even still, we don't have the One Ring fully charged, which makes this fight significantly more manga s But we're going to Shadow Strike him just to do a good chunk of chip damage. And then we're actually going to be uh, doing our stunning strikes. So we do a stun strike and then a flurry kill. That quickly racks up our combos and then we can flash brand which then recharges our one ring So here we have a hunter that gives us issues. He knocks us down, gives us a last chance. So now the one ring is charged and we just immediately activate it and just go and try and kill Rug as quickly as possible. See, this is where I kind of panic because even with the fact that my camera is facing the right way, I'm like, oh, shoot, this is going to be issues. But we're able to dominate Rug and finish that up Fear. Udun slips from your fingers so easy. 
so now we're going to go into our uh we're going to quickly fast travel just to give us a little bit more distance and then we're going to head over to our next uh war chief mission uh we've branded two war chiefs we have three more left uh we have one we have this one and then the next one we're actually branding two war chiefs at once so we got our homeboys there that are in the middle of a tussle they can handle it we're not worried about it We're just going to go ahead and jump down here and start this next mission called Hearts and Minds. Hearts and Minds is in a really tough mission. I will force the light into these Uruks. They will forsake their water. Uh, we have to only brand very specific Urukai. And we can't raise the alarm either. But this stronghold is my least favorite. Because there's such... It's such awkward. It's just such so. It's very awkwardly laid out. And because as well, we can't raise the alarm. So when the Uruk go to raise the alarm, we have we have to deal with them. Otherwise, we lose the run. And so we try to keep our stealth as much as possible, but again, it's really hard. It's really hard to move around this area quickly without raising the alarm, as well as being able to brand the 10 Uruks. This is where we get a lot of RNG for enemy positions. And other things like that. And unfortunately, this is one of the big reset points in the run. And unfortunately, there's no way that we can really route it to be earlier. So here, we've branded everybody, and now we have Skok Raid Leader. And we're gonna kill him. Well, not kill him, but we're gonna dominate him. Make him join our troop. Your tiny insurrections are a joke! Face us in the open! Face your end! I can't it kill me if you must, but I will never serve filth like you. Sauron is lord, and your followers will suffer. Okay, so now we're going to go into our, uh, we have two more missions left in the run, and that is the Dark Lord Answers and the True Lord of the Rings. The Dark Lord Answers is another heavy reset point because we have to fight, we have to dominate two war chiefs at once. And as you've seen, when it comes to dominating two war chiefs at once, the light of a region will shine on you. That means we can only use our ring on one of them. Which makes it really tough because one of the biggest struggles that we found in the community was figuring out between these two war chiefs, because every single captain and war chief is the same. 
But between these two war chiefs, figuring out which one would be better to use our ring on and which one wouldn't. Because you can't, it's not worth it to try and rebuild it when you're going into that fight. So yeah, uh, they took all of our, like, not just our followers, but our major homeboys. Like, this isn't just like the other guys Th these are these are the ogs like they took the war chiefs we don't like that so we're gonna rush them uh here we you see that we do have the ring once and it comes in super nice because we have to brand executioners and brand or kill executioners and since we have flash brand we can do that super fast because we have unlimited flash flash brands as long as the one ring is active so then at this point now we just brand or kill the rest and some of them we kill some of them we brand it just kind of all depends on what buttons we push Okay, so now we have our new group of homies, and we got a quick little. This is a pretty much an auto scroller. Um, we just hold off the army, so at this point it's just not dying. So this is another really good spot to turn it over to uh, donations. All right, so now we have Tombhorn Evil Eye as our first other war chief that spawns, and this is actually the one that we don't. Or I might be remembering it wrong. No, we don't use our ring for him, and the reason for that is because the other guy that spawns, he has a shield. And since the other guy has a shield, we don't want to uh, deal with... We don't want to worry about him. Whereas, if we just use... Uh, where we can just use our regular stun strikes to do a lot of damage to him... Um, but it's also really tough because the other enemies like to get involved and join the party. But Tumorn is going to sit there and taunt us the whole time we're beating on him. Give me the 
choice of death, or will you corrupt me too? So two horn evil eyes, now ours, and now we're gonna go and use our ring to dominate the other guy using our shield, using um, our ring. Because that just makes us go by so much faster. Because if he, if we didn't use the ring, then his shield would block a lot of our attacks, and it would require a lot more precise combat as well as just. We're also not by our homeboys right now, and so we would struggle a lot. Stay away, demon. Do not touch me with your wicked magic. So we dominate Gorfiel the massive, Gorfell the massive, which ends the mission for uh, um, the Dark Lord answers. And then we head to the true Lord of the Rings, which is the last mission of the game and also a really long final boss fight. So shout outs to again Texas Warrior09 because he came up with the bot with the strats for this fight. Uh, and so the only real way to do damage to Sauron here is with the ring. And so anytime that we have the ring, we need to make sure that we do everything in our power to uh, damage him as much as possible. And so now that we don't have the ring, we need to get it back. Because we don't do that much damage without it. And so we're actually going to be branding enemies like crazy to refill the ring and finish them off. So now that the ring is recharged, we, act, we just get close to Sauron, we activate it, and then we do our combat executions to just hurt him a lot. So that's the first phase of the Sauron fight. The first phase is super easy. Do you really think you can defeat me so easily? What's yours has always been mine. And um but the only problem is for the second phase of the fight, he takes all of our OG homeboys and he turns them against us. And then he disappears. And we use the same kind of strats against the war against these war chiefs. Well, the only problem is rather than having to deal with maybe one or two at a time, we have to deal with all five of them. They all have a massive agenda. And because they're war chiefs, they'll hurt a lot. And so we have to not die and that's honestly the biggest struggle especially with Tombhorn evil eye because Tombhorn himself is a is an archer and he's very accurate and so we need to do what we can to avoid getting hit which as you can see is really hard <laughs> So I'm doing a lot of vaulting here just so that way I get over by these groups of Uruks rather than dealing with uh, um, rather than dealing with the war chiefs. It just makes it easier to build up our combos. So because Tombhorn does poison and can chunk out like half of our health instantaneously, we're just gonna go ahead and kill him right away. That way we don't need to feel, we're not as pressured to be out at range.
And then we're gonna use our shadow brands to go up here and brand these archers. Or at least to brand some of them. And as you can see, now that we killed Tombhorn like super quickly, we just don't have to worry about uh, we just don't have to worry about being shot at from a range as much because the other archers aren't nearly as accurate and as deadly. So we're activating here and we're going and killing uh, Rug the Crafty because he's our other ranged nemesis and he's also like super low on health so we can kill him without expending our entire ring. And then we can go and do a lot of damage onto Skok the Raid Leader and, I actually, and we actually end up killing him in this video. And so being able to kill two war chiefs while the ring is active is super nice. But this is where things get real dicey because now we have two shield guys that we have to deal with. And we do that by the way that you would certainly expect. We run, we brand, we get our ring and then we delete them. But since right now we don't have anybody that we can really brand, I go and I do a little bit of chip damage. And then once I find guys I can brand, I focus on the brandings to get the ring back. And we're actually going to activate the ring and then just start going ham. So we killed one, and now we only have one left. This guy is the only one left, so we don't make a big effort, especially since he's already super low. We just don't make that big of an effort to recharge our ring, even though we're going to need it, because now that he's dead, Sauron is going to come back. But that's the end of the second phase. Uh, the third phase is uh, not the hardest phase. I think the War Chief phase is the hardest. But as you can see, he's reviving our homeboys that betrayed us. And But this time, so now instead of just dealing with either Sauron or the five war chiefs, we have to deal with both Sauron and the war chiefs. But he only respawns the war chiefs when he hits a certain threshold in his health. And we're going to try and bypass that with our ring. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to recharge our ring. We're going to go up to Sauron. We're going to hit him twice. And then once we've hit Sauron twice, then we are going to uh, pull back. I think we actually end up killing Skok, but I think that's actually slow. So we're not going to do that in future runs. Um... But we're going to hit him twice, we're going to back off, wait for him to spawn one more War Chief, and then we're going to recharge, refill our ring again, and we're just going to uh, use that to beat the schnoz out of Sauron to prevent the spawnings of, other, of the other War Chiefs. So yeah, here we lose time because we sit here and we have to go through this long animation of Skok getting beheaded. But here he's going to revive him. And we don't want him. We That guy is the better one for him to revive versus Skok or Tombhorn. Um, I, they are revived in a specific order. Which is super nice, so we don't have to worry about the RNG of which one gets revived and which one doesn't, and we can just prep. We can just be ready for those specific cycles and then just go off that. Of 
So, we've recharged our ring, and now we're gonna drop down. And we're just gonna start beating the tar out of Sauron. And we actually got really lucky because there was only one Uruk by Sauron. And the reason why that's super lucky is because there's a chance that we could just start killing Uruks instead of hurting Sauron. And we really don't want that to happen. And so time will come up once we finish this last little bit of dialogue and we complete the um, quick time event to end the run. So that was Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, the Bright Lord, any percent. Um, thank you guys for watching this run. I hope that I am able to showcase this off at SGDQ 2020 if possible. Uh, again, shout outs to Texas Warrior 09 for being a amazing strat finder for this game. Uh, majority of the strats were found by both him and myself. And then again, shout outs to the rest of the Lord of the Rings community. Shout outs to Midwest Speedfest. Shout outs to Rogue Nation. And so, yeah, again, thank you guys for watching this run. Hope you guys enjoyed the really awesome strats that I think that this game has. And uh, we will see you guys at SGDQ. Your spirit is cursed. Banished from the Undying Lands and bound within Mordor until the One Ring is unmade. I really like showing off this last ending cinematic because it shows, it brings you right to where the game starts. Finally, all will fear me and rejoice. So yeah, that was it. Thank you guys for watching.